Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the South Derbyshire series, a district of Derbyshire which stretches from Leicestershire to Staffordshire, containing 50 civil parishes. Here's one of them for you. I'm not going to lie to you, it's really, really cold this morning. Yes. Hello, Nikki. Are you cold? Very. Very. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are both cold and I look like a Sherpa in this with my hood up. I don't like wearing my hood up, but you know, it, ha most. it happens. Right, where are we? We are in a brand new district of Derbyshire. Hello again, Derbyshire. For the very first time, welcome to South Derbyshire. And in this village, we're going to find a massive factory, which is one of only a few coffee factories in Britain. Do you fancy a latte, Mrs? Definitely. <laughs> we'll see if they've got one on offer. Welcome to Hatton. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to South Derbyshire, folks. This is Hatton, located three miles north of Burton-upon-Trent, 12 miles west of Derby and 25 miles east of Stoke. It adjoins Staffordshire to the south. Its southern boundary is the River Dove, which flows between the two counties. The village is close to the A50, which links the M1 to the M6. The A50 used to pass across the northern edge of the village, but it was bypassed in May 1995, and the road became known as the Foston Hatton Hilton Bypass, which cost £6 million to build. The former route is now the A511, which passes through the village from Tutbury, the next village to the south. Hatton retains easy access to the A50, making it a very attractive area for commuters. History-wise, Hatton goes back to the time of the Doomsday Book, when it belonged to Henry de Ferris. However, its modern history is better documented. In 1880, the village had around 500 residents, but that population has since soared thanks to a local industry, most notably a Nestlé coffee factory, which sits alongside the River Dove. Trent Valley Glassworks used to be here too, and the village was also where the first non-sparking train wheel for mining was invented. It rained here on our visit, but we made the most of it still. Let's go! We start on Station Road and straight away there's a major landmark. That's the Salt Brook, a stream which runs around Hatton to the east. Alongside the brook is the Tavern, one of the village's pubs. This is a community pub run by the McAvoy family and it's dog friendly too. There's a metal bench next to which might not seem like anything exciting, but it's notable. This is Hatton's Millennium Seat, presented in the year 2000. Not far away, there's a bus stop. Buses that stop here include the 401 and the Villager. You can reach Derby, Utoxeter and Burton-upon-Trent from here. We then crossed the road because Nicky spotted the Village's book exchange, which is a bookshelf named the Granville Library. The further south down Station Road you go, the more commercial it becomes. We'll see the current shops shortly, but there are some old shop fronts too, like this one. 
Okay, so I've reached the corner of Hassel Road. These houses look very interesting. I wonder whether they were something in a previous life. I don't think they were built like that originally. Arms maybe? Maybe arms houses. They don't, they don't look like arms houses, but they could be. Anyway, opposite those, we've got the Hatton Centre, the Hatton Adult uh, community, uh, community Education Centre, where there's a parish notice board. If you're new to the channel, this is what I do whenever I find one of these things. Nikki's doing the honours of putting a TVI card on the board. That marks Hatton off. That's one down in South Derbyshire and 49 to go. Let's continue. Here's a fascinating little shop. This is Edgar's Collectibles, a real Aladdin's cave of old and rare items. It's a pity it wasn't open, but it looked amazing. Next, we have All Saints Church, which was built in 1886. Hatton Parish Council described this as a beautiful church with stained glass windows and woodwork ceilings. It adjoins Hatton Jubilee Hall, which is a community hall. The adult learning centre we saw earlier was too, but that's been empty since 2015. Now we're starting to hit the shops. This one on the corner of Church Avenue is Hatton's former post office. Outside the building, there's a pillar box and a notable one too. This one was installed during the reign of George V. The modern post office is located inside another shop. Speaking of those, Hatton has a co-op supermarket, two newsagents and several other village shops and food outlets. It's a busy area this. Well, there might be a coffee factory here in Hatton, but the nicer local does, what's this, Toblerone hot chocolate? Toblerone hot chocolate, so uh, yeah, cheers. It's cold out here, I need this right now. Uh, it's pretty nice, actually. I'm gonna task you with holding that while we carry on, because yeah. I, I can't hold that on the camera at the same time. We're heading back this way, we're turning right just there to head towards a park next. Now we come to the Saltbrook Heritage Trail. To get to this, we pass through Jubilee Field, a small park. This will take us around the edge of the coffee factory. The trail features information boards and sculptures and was created through a project run by a local community group, the Friends of Saltbrook Committee. Supported by People Express and the internationally acclaimed sculptor John Newling, the aim of the project was to preserve Hatton's industrial history. This includes the Trent Valley Glassworks and the local dairy farming, which would eventually lead to Nestlé starting up here in 1901. Four professional artists, Alex Blakey, Dan Rawlings, Graham Mitchison and Rachel Carter, were commissioned to each create a unique sculpture. The sculptures are named Wheel, Silo, Farmer and Gob, and are based on Hatton's history of farming, manufacturing, engineering and transport. So there's some photographs in this. Good spot there by Nikki. Let's have a closer look. It's all to do with the glass making process. This is actual glass, this in the centre on the spokes of this wheel. It might be to do with both glass and coffee because you know, the area's got history for both. So. Yes, it has, yeah. We'll see the, uh, the coffee factory. I've purposely not filmed it yet. We'll see it from the other side when we get off this footpath. Heritage stuff, too. That's on camera. <laughs> Modern industry in Hatton is dominated by the Nestlé Coffee Factory. Despite being in Hatton, this is known as Nestlé's Tutbury Factory. The factory is the longest running Nestlé factory in the world outside of Switzerland. It's surrounded by farmland and sits close to a railway line. These are important factors in why it exists. The farmland supported a strong dairy farming industry and a private railway siding gave access to milk trains. The siding has now gone and the factory has since developed into a major coffee producer, the sole United Kingdom facility producing the Nescafe Dolce Gusto range. All of Nestlé's UK and Ireland coffee production was moved to the site in 2014 and it employs around a thousand people. During World War II, the factory produced powdered milk. 
These days, it makes around 175,000 jars of coffee a day. You've heard that phrase before, haven't you? Wake up and smell the coffee. Well, if you come to Hatton, you certainly can smell the coffee. This street is just to the side of the factory, to the south of the factory, and there is definitely a coffee smell on the air. I don't like coffee. I, uh, I'm much more of a tea drinker and that's uh, very rare anyway, but uh, yeah, coffee is definitely on the air here. Okay, next we're uh, heading into this little park. This is uh, Thistley Place Meadows Nature Reserve. And from here you can see the River Dove, which is down there. And there's a bridge over the Dove there between Hatton and Tutbury. There's a few things uh, of note in this little park. So we'll talk about this next. Thistley Place Meadow Community Nature Reserve sits beside the River Dove, which separates the village from Staffordshire and from Tutbury. The river here features an island, locally known as Duggies Island. It was created in 1831 when a fleam was dug out for a cotton mill in Tutbury. Hatton is about half a mile north of Tutbury and the Dove is crossed by a listed bridge between the two villages. We can get close to this. It carries the A511. It dates from between 1815 and 1817 and it's made of rusticated sandstone consisting of five depressed segmental arches. Thistley Place Meadow is also the location of Hatton's War Memorial, which features a statue of national hero Captain Sir Tom Moore. This was recently vandalised by a protester from the group End UK Private Jets. I'll let you read the article linked below. It's quite disgusting. Okay, next up we have the railway and uh, there's a signal box here, which is one of Hatton's listed buildings. That's Tutbury Crossing signal box. So let's talk a bit about the railway station next, shall we? Better not be a train going overhead. I'm going to cross under this bridge. No light does. A little earlier in the route, we passed under the Nottingham to Crewe railway line, which runs to the south of the coffee factory. Hatton has a station on this line. That would be Tutbury and Hatton Railway Station and services through here are provided by East Midlands Railway. The station is formed of two platforms which are staggered either side of a level crossing, supervised by a signal box. The station was closed in the beaching cuts in 1966, but public demand saw it reopen in 1989. The original station was simply called Tutbury and was opened in 1848. The station's signal box, which was built by the North Staffordshire Railway in 1872, includes a signal frame that was installed in 1897. And a few paces away from the station is another pub, and it's railway themed too. This is the Railway Inn. Okay, the rain is starting to fall a bit uh, heavier now, so Nikki has decided to go back to the car, leaving me on my own for the rest of the route. We've come away from the railway station and now we're in a mainly residential area to the west of the main road. Uh, we've got a, a building here which looks very interesting. This is definitely not residential. We'll talk about that and then we'll make our way through this housing estate back to where we began. Scropton Road sees us past two interesting buildings. This one was the Courthouse and Public Hall, and it's dated 1906. The second is the current Methodist Church. This originated as a primitive Methodist chapel in 1912, and it's dedicated to John Prince, the man who purchased the land that this is built upon. Then we've got Hatton Garage Services Limited, which is exactly what it says on the tin, an MOT testing centre and repair garage. A right turn then takes us into Scropton Road Sports Ground. The field this occupies was purchased in 1962 using a grant from Repton Rural Council, which was the predecessor of South Derbyshire District Council, together with public subscriptions from the people of Hatton Village. 
Its facilities include two full-size football pitches, a multi-use games area, a bowling green, a children's play area and a clubhouse and social club. Okay, now we're properly in the housing estate. As you can see, very residential. A nice mix of bungalows and houses. So, you know, it's not all one style. I'm heading for a primary school here and uh, then we'll uh, walk sort of this direction and that'll take us back to the main road and back to the car. I wish this rain would go away. The last section of the main walk is primarily residential in nature, but here's Hatton's school, Heathfield's primary school. The village's location close to the A50 and the attraction of local jobs means Hatton is a desirable place to live for many workers and commuters. A lot of this estate we're walking through now has sprung up over the last 40 or 50 years and Hatton continues to grow today. This gives me a chance to tell you about some notable people who have lived in Hatton over the years. One of them is John Berry. He designed the Esso Tiger in the 1950s. Then there's Jodie Bunting, the TV fitness expert from Channel 4's former morning show, The Big Breakfast. And also Roger Davis, the former Derby County footballer who currently provides radio commentary for the club's games. And this is where I parked the car. This is Cherry Meadow. This is another new area of uh, housing. There's my car right there, the Blue Punto. Now we're not quite finished with Hatton because up towards the main road to the north there, there's a few other landmarks of interest and uh, we will drive to those in a moment. I'm going to sit in the car though for a, a minute or so and try and dry off a little bit. To finish off this episode, we've come in out of the rain, which hopefully is slowing down. It seems to be. We're sat inside the Salt Box Cafe, which is quite a notable cafe in this village. And I'll tell you why in a few moments, after I've eaten a steak and ale pie, that is. Well, that's on you for the missus. Yes, that was some good food. And so it should be when you consider that the Saltbox Cafe has quite the reputation. 
You see, the Salt Box has previously won awards for the best transport cafe in the UK. There's no similar truck stop on the parallel A50, hence its popularity. There are some negative reviews online, but for us, everything was spot on. Right next to the cafe, there's a car wash. On the other side of the road is the Sunar Gao Indian restaurant, and a bit further up the road, there's a petrol station too. If you follow the road from here to the west, you'll eventually end up at a junction where the A511 meets the current A50. And if you go to the east, you'll also come to the A50, but on the way, you'll pass through Hilton, a village of similar size. Here comes the boss. Now then. <laughs> Yeah, it is. How was that lasagna? Needed. I'm, I'm, I'm warm from the inside now, so it's always good. <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear it. Right, that's been the parish of Hatton. One down in South Derbyshire and 49 to go. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Need to let Nikki in the car. One second. One second. There you go. How's that? <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, as I was saying, that's one down in South Derbyshire and 49 to go and uh may as well go to the next one right now actually um just to the north uh, hopefully it's going to warm up and this rain stops i've said that three times now in this video but i sincerely hope it does because it's not very nice out here it's very unpleasant but anyway i think i've put hatton uh on the map done a good job of it hopefully so i'll see you next week i've been andy also known as the village idiot this has been the parish of hatton and i'm out <laughs>